Well, there's one of our dear friends, a native of Oak Park, Illinois, John Mahoney, the star of Frazier, throwing out a ceremonial first pitch before the game. And if the pitchers can throw it like that in the dirt, they've got a good chance, Steve, of keeping it in the ballpark because the weather today is very hitter friendly. 53 degrees, but the wind's blowing straight out at Wrigley Field at 23 miles an hour, gusting to 39 today. When Matt Clement is right, he throws a lot of ground balls, and he's going to have to do it early because you can get blown out of this one without a great deal of difficulty. Matt has had the occasional problem with the left hand hitter. And when you look at Drew and Edmonds and Martinez, you realize along with Vina that these guys can create havoc for a right hand pitcher. And the real problem when you face the Cardinals, it goes hand in hand. They have a very high on base percentage. They're second in the league there. They've struck out the fewest number of times offensively. They have the highest team batting average and they've hit the second highest total of home runs. So if you face them you have to try to minimize the damage and hope that your offense can outscore them no matter where you play them. The Cardinals line up this way with Fernando Vina leading off. He hit a grand slam in the series opener. J.D. Drew back in the lineup in right field with Albert Pujols in left. Jim Edmonds in center field was pitched very well by the Cubs yesterday and he was held off the scoreboard. Scott Rowland is at third base. Tino Martinez slumping with the RBI production is at first. Edgar Renteria the shortstop. Mike Matheny hits eighth and Brett Tomko will pitch and bat ninth. There you look at the Pepsi defense and how they'll line up behind Matt Clement. We're king on Troy O'Leary who's in right field because Sammy's on the disabled list and it's Alou Patterson and O'Leary in the outfield. Bellhorn Gonzalez Grezolanik and Troy in the infield. Damian Miller behind the plate. Matt Clement on the hill. St. Louis the number one offensive team in the National League. And normally when you play tough and tight ball games it goes hand in hand with good pitching that you have to play real solid defense. The Cardinals have the solid defense. The Cubs have not played well defensively this year but they have played well defensively in this series and Chip with the rain coming down you wonder how long they're going to let this go because it is uh, starting to rain a little bit harder. Doug Eddings will be the home plate umpire with Ron Culpa Mike Winters and Bruce Fremming the crew chief. I think they want to get this game in quite obviously the Cubs don't want to lose a home date with the Cardinals and St. Louis with an off day tomorrow they want to get out of town and get back home for the Reds and the Cubs. Well normally this is a very slow infield but it's a little slower today so you're going to have to charge most everything if you're an infielder. Bellhorn in very close at third respecting the fact that Vina might bunt. However every time the Cubs have gotten the ball inside on Vina he's turned on it for an extra base hit. He has a grand slam in the series. He also has a double is two for nine and is hitting 220 on the campaign and Clement's first delivery is way outside. Vina struggling with his batting average. He's had a couple of cortisone injections in his wrist. And the batting average still not where he would like it to be but ordinarily one of this league's best and peskiest leadoff men. Well you're going to give up home runs today. That's just the nature of this ballpark. However you can't walk anybody. That dance is in and a count now two balls and a strike. Fernando Vina doesn't mind getting hit by a pitch. He does that quite often. Ground ball right side and it's through past Aesop Choi. So Vina ganks a ball into right field in front of Troy O'Leary and he's aboard to open up the game. When the Cubs have stayed away from Vina they've gotten him out. When they throw him middle in he's gotten a base hit. And that ball just had a little too much of the plate. Clement wanted to keep it down a little lower past the diving Choi and an ominous beginning to this game for a red hot Cardinal offense. J.D. Drew now playing in his 15th game this season. He missed some time with some right patella tendon surgery at the start of the year. But his stroke starting to get tuned up. He's had two very big hits in this series a game tying pinch hit in the ninth inning yesterday he also had an eighth inning home run in the series opener that came against Carlos Zambrano that one hit off Doug Eddings the home plate umpire J. 
Drew at 3.02 on the year. Six runs batted in. And where you figure Matt's going to have some trouble, Steve, his strength is also the Cardinals' hitter's strength, especially to the left-handed bats. Well, normally he's a sinker baller, a low ball pitcher, and the left-hand hitters, normally low ball hitters. Vina good lead at first. And that misses outside, ball two, strike one, top of the first inning. Wind is howling out, and it's getting darker and nastier by the minute here. J.D. Drew has yet to ground into a double play. The combination of Gonzalez Grezelanek has been terrific at turning two. He took a little off and got it over. Cub fans might remember three years ago today, the Brewers beat the Cubs 14 to 8 in a four hour and 22 minute regulation nine inning game. We may not get to nine innings. If we do, we might have that kind of time frame because. This is an offensive day, you figure, in Chicago. 2 2. Chopper towards short. One there, that's all the Cubs get. Vina's retired on the force play, drew it first for Pujols. Well, this is a good sign. There's been two hitters and two ground balls. Now, one of them snuck through the right side, but still, Drew was over the top of that one and couldn't do much with it. So Drew's at first base for Albert Pools. Cubs have kept this guy down in the series. Albert just one for nine so far. One of the ways to do it, Chip, when they've gone inside, they've gone way in off the plate. But more times than not, they've stayed away with good sliders. And Albert has been expanding that strike zone. He is right on top of the plate. He's trying to take away that outside corner. Remember, he's playing with that ligament problem in his right elbow Cardinals thought for about three weeks he really wouldn't be able to make many if any throws but the Cardinals have had to keep him in the lineup because his bat makes this offense that much more potent and he is starting to throw the ball a little bit better now he was lost for five games the Cardinals lost four or five and Tony La Russa said wait a second I've got to put you in I just don't want you to make any throws that have anything on it he stayed in the lineup They've gotten a whole lot better, but Chip, they're playing a stretch of 27 straight games against the Central. They're just one in five to start that stretch. They were swept by the Reds. They've split the first two here in Chicago, and a ground ball toward third. Bellhorn fires to second. Good dig out there by Grunzelanek. They force J.D. Drew, who holds it first now with two outs for Jim Edmonds. That's what they've been doing to Albert. They're throwing sliders. They're keeping it down, and he's out on the front foot way ahead on his swing. He tries to take it down the line. Mark Bellhorn does a good job. You see the location. That one is low and away. And Pujols, when he's right, will hit that ball to right center. Now he's trying to roll over the top and pull it. That turns into a lot of ground balls to the left side. So despite one Cardinal hit, everything Clement has seen hit has been hit on the ground. But here's the test because Edmonds, a dead low ball hitter. The Cubs have handled him by throwing the ball up and away to him. Third best hitter in the National League with a 345 average is Edmonds with seven home runs. And the ball misses over the middle of the plate, but too low. Ball one. If you throw it down and away to this guy, he's going to hit a home run to left center field. He's got an uppercut swing, and he's got a lot of power. Edmonds was 0 for 5 yesterday. Really. Hasn't done much on this trip for the Cardinals. He has three hits in his last 23 at bats. You can keep him and Pujols down. You're going to help yourself an awful lot, but that's easier said than done. You don't have to worry about Pujols running. He doesn't do it often, and he doesn't do it well. Two outs, a man on. Dangerous pitch to Edmonds. Two balls, no strikes. Scott Rowland waits to hit next. I would give him the 3-0 green light. Because he just might get a fastball down to his liking. So for Matt Clement, you have to be careful here. 3-0 to the Cardinals center fielder, Jim Edmonds. And they just pitch around him. They'll take their chances with the right hand hitting Scott Rowland, who homered against Kerry Wood yesterday. That home run by Scott Rowland was a fastball out away. And he hit it awfully hard, a line drive into right center field. All you have to do today is hit a fly ball. 
Roland with a six game hitting streak. He's hitting 280 on the year. Eight home runs already 28 runs batted in. But he's still not their RBI leader. Their shortstop Edgar Renteria is. And he's got 30 of them. No weak spots in this St. Louis batting order. Two on two out. And Clement gets the high strike. If you can get out of this first inning. It's a big advantage because Tomko has struggled in the first. And you face some pretty tough hitters three four five with Pujols Edmonds and Roland. Late arriving crowd on a blustery day at the ballpark. One strike to roll it. It's even now one and one. Big baseball story off the field last night. Jeff Torborg relieved of his duties by the Florida Marlins. Tough to win when four of your starters go down, but that's the case for the Fighting Fish. Jack McKeon named the new manager today. That escapes Miller. It's a strike call, no advance by the runners. One and two, your count. Well, that might bode well. I know that Jack is not the general manager, but he's known as Trader Jack, and he might convince the management of the Florida Marlins that in the next week or so, it might be time to start unloading. They're nine games in back of Atlanta. They've won two of their last ten. They are not going anywhere this year, and they do have some higher salaries, and there's a lot of people around baseball that covet Mike Lowell. And there's one team wearing blue today that falls into that category. I'm not mistaken if my color blindness will escape me for a minute. That team would be the Cubs. One ball, two strikes <laughs> to Scott Rowland. Scoreless first for the moment. Popped up back toward us. And we'll do it again at one and two. Lots of other baseball already underway. We'll be in Milwaukee tomorrow night starting a four game series with the Brewers. At the start of a very big 14 game four city road trip. At one and two, you'd like to get Roland out, out of the strike zone. Bear in mind that he's walked more than he's fanned, which is a rarity. One, two. He struck him out. There's that wicked slider. And man, come out a very sharp first inning. A lot of ground balls. That's a good sign. Here come the Cubs in the first. How'd you make your first billion? Oil and cattle. Let's call it offshore banking. Ha! And you, Jones, we're all curious. How'd you make your first billion? Me? Oh, Pepsi. You invented Pepsi. Oh, no, I, I just drank one. <laughs> Want your first billion? Enter Pepsi's Play for a Billion sweepstakes. 1,000 winners compete for a guaranteed million on live TV. And one, they even win one billion. You guys got a foosball table? Check specially marked Pepsi products. Ladies and gentlemen, the technology offensive has begun. Observe. Laser-guided adaptive cruise control, a rear-view camera, suspension that lowers at speed, headlights that turn to illuminate your path on curves. Enough. So, what do we do now? Introducing the entirely new Lexus RX 330. Putting the world on notice again. What do we do now? Well, indeed, a very happy Mother's Day. A blustery Sunday afternoon here in Chicago. I feel kind of like Dorothy and the Wizard of Oz. Keep waiting for the, the cyclone to show up. And hopefully the Cubs offense will take advantage of the blustery wins. Here's Dusty Baker's Pepsi lineup with Mark Bellhorn back in the leadoff spot for his second straight game. Alex Gonzalez, Troy O'Leary hits third. Alou, Choi, and Patterson in the middle of the attack with Mark Rudzelanek, Damian Miller, and Matt Clement. 7th, 8th, and ninth. And there's a look at the Cardinal defense. Pujols, Edmonds, and Drew left to right with Roland, Renteria, Vini, and Martinez. Matheny behind the plate. Tomko on the hill. This is a wonderful defense headed up by Edgar Renteria. Gold glove shorts up. And a guy that's having a banner year offensively. So the inning to jump on Tomko, the first inning. 
He's given up 16 first inning runs. He's given up 28 runs in total in 48 and two thirds of work. Unlike Clemente, who's a sinker baller, Tomko throws a lot of fly balls. There's one off the bat of Bellhorn. And the Cubs, will they have the lead? No, they'll be robbed. Last minute, the wind died. It's blown out toward right. Mark picked the wrong spot. Hit it a mile, but it's caught. One man down. Well, unfortunately, that ball just drifted as the wind is blowing to the right field corner. And that's the only thing kept it in the ballpark. Again, Tomko's not going to throw ground balls. He's going to throw fly balls. This one, for an instant, looked like it was gone, but you see Pujols drifting with it. If that ball was hit a little toward center field, would have been out of the park. So Alex Gonzalez will be the batter, and he takes a quick strike. Alex was yesterday's hero. Game winning 10th inning home run off the Cardinals and Cal Eldred. That earned the Cubs a 3 2 win and a series split. Alex with three extra inning home runs in the month of May. The last National League player to do that was Ron Gant eight years ago with the Cincinnati Reds. He's hit four of them in total. He's knocked in 13 overall and has done a fine job of hitting in front of. Sammy Sosa and company in the number two spot. One of the things he's done, Chip, is he's cut down his strikeouts because he's trying to make some contact. Sometimes he has to try to hit the ball to right field, and he's always had pretty good luck against Tomko. There's ball four, one on, one out for Troy O'Leary. It's a left hand hitter's paradise today with the wind blowing out toward right and right center field. Tony La Russa looking on. This is a battle of two excellent managers, Dusty Baker and Tony La Russa. They'll also be teammates in the All Star game. Dusty will manage, and Tony will be one of the coaches. As will Lloyd McClendon. Ground ball to Fini on the first pitch. Funny Hoppy stuck with it. Renteria the turn, and not in time. O'Leary beats the play. I'm not sure that he did beat the play, but it was a real good turn by Vini and Renteria. Gonzalez went in hard at short but Renteria is like a ballerina making the pivot. It's very difficult to get a piece of him and stop him from throwing it. Watch it again. The play at first is close but I think the throw might have beaten him. However they get the benefit of the call by Ron Culpa. Very close at first base and the tie as you know does go to the runner. And that brings up Moise Salou whose bat is starting to come back to life. He's hit a home run in the series four in total this year with 20 knocked in during this stretch where Steve the Cubs were able to hang on to first place. They were doing it with the great pitching terrific work out of the bullpen but without much production from Sammy Sosa who was playing hurt and Moise Salou who just wasn't swinging the bat well. I think Moises is going to hit a home run today. It's just a question of which at bat. One ball one strike. He got a ball out over the plate yesterday and he hit it out in the sixth inning. He's starting to see the ball a whole lot better and if he heats it up which he'll have to do with Sammy gone the Cubs are going to be in good shape. What's the psychological aspect of losing Sosa for two weeks now. I mean we talked about it on the way to the ballpark. We really have seen two Sammy Sosa's this year offensively. Well there's no question that Sammy started out hitting the ball well but because of that toe problem which he's had for a long time by the way it hasn't been the same Sosa so if you look at the last two and a half weeks the numbers don't lie one home run three driven in so losing Sammy the Sammy that we saw for the last two and a half weeks is not going to have that much of an effect when Sammy comes back if he's entirely healthy he'll be a huge lift to this lineup I think everybody's going to pick it up three one count Alu scorches that ball right center field and Edmonds will win. Tomko's first inning troubles continue. Alu does get the home run, Steve, that you said he would hit today. And the Cubs jump in front 2 0 over the Cardinals. You just get the feeling when Moises has good balance that he's seeing the ball exceptionally well. He opens up because this ball's on the inner half. He hits it on the sweet spot of the bat and takes it out of the ballpark. He's hit his fifth, he's driven in 22. 
And in the absence of Sammy Sosa, Moises is going to have to pick it up. And for Southwest Airlines, it flew 401 very well predicted feet. So he stopped Choi will take his turns as Steve recovers from the dislocated <laughs> shoulder he got from patting himself on the back one and one is your count. Well, sometimes you know you see a guy hitting in batting practice and you just get the feeling that he's ready to go. And I think Moises is ready to go on a hot streak. He looks at that one over the outside corner one ball two strikes. In the absence of Sammy Moises is picking it up from the dugout after the home run. Round ball to the right side. Tino Martinez makes a nice pick up and Topko wins the race to the bag. Two runs on one hit. Topko's first inning issues continue and the Cubs lead it to zip. Presenting the Lincoln Mercury family of SUVs. They're powerful, innovative, and during the Lincoln Mercury SUV drive away, interest free for five years, which leaves you plenty of time and money to pursue other interests. And now, drive away in Mercury Mountaineer with 0% APR for 60 months, and with a thousand down, we'll match a thousand. The SUV drive away only at your Lincoln Mercury dealer, the domain of civilized SUVs. See your local Lincoln Mercury dealer today. Today, HP technology is producing prodigies of speed and discovering new directions in film. It's investigating new worlds out there and in us. And it's making the global economy more global. For the world's great companies, thinkers, and doers, HP makes more things more possible. Last year, 137 shows were nominated for Emmy Awards. If all you have is ordinary TV, you missed half of them. Call 1-888-4-BEST-TV. Get Comcast Digital Cable for only $29.99 a month. Get great shows like The Shield, Essence of Emerald, and The Osbournes. Call now and get four months of digital cable for $29.99 a month. Comcast Digital Cable. It's not just more TV, it's better TV. Maybe it doesn't surprise you that for $279 a month, you can get a 2.5-liter, 192-horsepower engine, luxurious leather seating, and permanent all-wheel drive standard. But did you ever think that for $279 a month, you could get it all in a Jaguar? Lease the Jaguar X-Type for only $279 a month. Visit your Chicagoland Jaguar retailer today. Tino Martinez leads off the Cardinals second. Cubs jump in front. 2 0. And happy Mother's Day to Ma and to all the moms out there. My mom Lila watching the game in suburban St. Louis. My stepmom Paula Carey in Atlanta. Of course, my wife Susan and her mom Ann Ierly down in Winter Park, Florida. Happy Mother's Day. Two quick strikes to the Cardinal first baseman, Tino Martinez. Just nine runs batted in for Tino. He swings over the top of that one. Two strikeouts for Clement. Well, Matt Clement is starting to get a pretty good arm angle where he's staying over the top, keeping his fingers on top of the baseball, and that slider is going down, which is exactly how he wants to throw it. He struggled with the release point lately, but it appears today like he has pretty good stuff. Renteria, the leading hitter in the league at 360. This guy is some kind of shortstop. Maybe the best in the National League. You don't hear him talked about in the same tenor as the Jeters, the Garcia Paras, or the A Rods. But he's got a chance to do something this year that no Cardinal shortstop has ever done. That is, drive in more than 83 runs and hit 20 home runs. He's already got 30 RBIs this year. He was also a pretty good runner, Chip. He stole 22 bases last year. He did hit 11 home runs. He's not known as a power hitter, but he's known as a great clutch hitter. That's a good reputation to get. There you look at the National League leaders. Mike Lieberthal of the Fight and Fills in second place. Two quick strikes to Renteria with the bases clear. 
Nats fastball off the plate. It didn't hurt the cause yesterday that Houston and Cincinnati also lost as the Cubs defeated St. Louis. That was a huge win yesterday. One ball, two strikes. Renteria scorches that over Grunzelonic's head and into right center field. Corey will try to cut it off. He slips, stumbles, and Renteria will stand at second with a double. It's one of the reasons why Renteria is hitting in excess of 360. Because when he gets down in the count, he tries to hit the ball the opposite way, figuring the pitcher is going to stay away. That time the fastball was running in, and you can see the inside out swing. That makes for a quality at bat, and in this case, a two base hit. You see the condition of the outfield. You got to be very carefully and go over gingerly, or you're going to lose your footing. Here's Mike Matheny, a real Iron Man behind the plate for the Cardinals. He's caught every inning, but 34 so far in 35 St. Louis games. I mean, he's like Randy Hundley of the Cubs 30 years ago. Every day, every inning. And you wonder, Steve, when the heat of the summer arrives in St. Louis, whether he'll be able to keep up that kind of pace for the Cardinals. Well, last year he caught 110 games. He hit a respectable 244. He's a decent hitter. They don't really care very much what he hits because he can catch it, call it, and throw it and think his way through it with the best in the game. No balls and a strike. The Marlins lost another pitcher, Miguel Tahara. He hurt his Achilles tripping over first base while trying to leg out a double play ground ball. They're going to try to find some way to blame that on Jeff Torbor. Well, the weather's Jeff's fault down there, too. One ball, one strike to Matheny. Cubs leading by a pair. And a line drive over the shortstop's head. That'll drop for a hit. Renteria will round third. He'll score without a throw. And the Cardinals are on the board. It's now a 2 1 game. Matheny has his 19th run batted in out of the eighth spot in the order. And now Tomko will try to help himself here in the second inning. Tomko's a pretty good hitting pitcher. That slider was right over the middle of the plate. When Clement gets under the ball that slider just doesn't work and that's one of the reasons why he's lost three in a row. He's got to stay on top. He'll get some tilt. The ball will go down and those line drives will turn into ground balls. I would think he'd be budding with a treacherous footing. He has four sacrifices on the year and Tomko a good hitter at 286. He is going to bunt. But that time tipped unsuccessfully. Strike one. He's one of the guys that can bring the bat back and take a swing at it. Jose Akendo, the third base coach, giving a set of signs. Bellhorn in very close at third. Oh, and one. Now it's nothing in two. The Marlins did get a lift from a young man by the name of Dontrell Willis. And uh, very, very knowledgeable Cub fans might remember that name. He was one of the pitchers the Cubs traded to the Marlins for Clement and Antonio Alfonseca. He threw very well, well in his major league starting debut. Seven strikeouts and in six innings for the Fish. But the Cubs knew that he was a pretty good pitcher. They just had to give somebody up of quality to get Clement and Alfonseca. No balls, two strikes. That one right down the middle and Tomko Nook knew it. That's a uh, out number two. Another name you might recall from the American League Kyle Loesch. That was the Rick Aguilera deal and those are the kinds of trades that people want to look back and blame general managers for making. But really if you're getting something of quality in return you want to give something of quality to the other team because down the road you might need to make another trade. And if you deal fairly with the other general managers they'll probably be more willing to work with you than. Obviously, if you take him to the cleaners. Here's Vina. Well, gone are the days where you're going to get something of value if you don't give up something of value. And because the Cubs made a deal that helped both teams with the Dontrell Willis deal, there might be another one in their future with the fish. No balls and a strike to Vina. 2 1 game now. And that paints the outside corner. Fernando not too happy about that. Well, Fernando thought it curved around the plate, but Doug Eddings said it was a pretty good pitch. That's the backdoor slider. Remember when they stayed away, they've gotten Vina. 
Moises over toward the line and very shallow in left field. Fina base hit past Choi in the first inning. Got a chance to pull that ball and almost took out one of his teammates. Well, he remembers yesterday when he swung at a slider and got hit in the leg. So that one was going right at him, and he figured I'll hit the ball before it hits me. That's the old get off me ball swing. <laughs> he almost hit it right at Woody Williams. Nothing in two is your count. But Feeney's still at first. And Feeney, another base hit to right field on an 0-2 count. J.D. Drew now steps up. This is what you don't want to have happen facing these Cardinal bats with men on base. Third hit of the inning. Now they're still trying to go inside. This one out away from Vina. And he pulls it in the hole. Vina is a much better hitter than a 220 hitter. And because he's had the hand problem, he's off to a slow start. But this guy has been a pest as far as the Cubs are concerned for a long time. And he's a lot bigger physically than I can ever remember seeing Fernando Vina. He must have really hit the weight room hard in the offseason. Well, last year he hit one home run in 622 at bats, and this year, even with a bad hand, he's hit three already, including a grand slam in the first game of the series. Dangerous hitter, J.D. Drew, with two on, two out for the Cardinals. Look at your seatbelts, folks. This one might be one of those. 23 22 Cubs Philly specials before it's all said and done. If you can get out of this one with just one run under the conditions today you consider yourself very fortunate. One ball no strikes to J.D. Drew. A little number hit to the right side very slowly. Brunson will have no play. Infield hit for J.D. Drew with a lot of young first basemen. They really have an overestimation of their ability to go to their right. No reason at all for he stop Choi to go after that ball because even if he makes the play he can't throw it. Watch how far he ranges to his right. He's got to get back to the bag here. By going that far to his right nobody gets to the bag and the inning stays alive for Pujols. That's a mental mistake on the part of Choi. Here's Pools, one of the game's deadliest hitters with the bases loaded. There are two outs, four hits in the inning. You're playing with fire here. Already three career grand slams for Pools. And in the dirt, Miller a good stab. Ball one, your count. You cannot give the league's best offensive team four outs in an inning. Clement made a great pitch to Drew. He should be out of the inning. He's not. Now he's thrown six wild pitches this year. So a lot of pressure on Damian Miller to block anything down. You figure they'd like to stay down to Pujols who doesn't have good speed and they'd love to see him hit the ball on the ground. Pujols just three for twenty five on this road trip and it's not surprising Steve that the Cardinals one and five on this road swing haven't hit well in situations like this for the most part. But they are going to hit well here. A towering fly ball. Left center field and deep. And Pujols has hit a grand slam. You give the Cardinals four outs. They score four runs on a Pujols grand slam. And they now have a 5 2 lead. The folks, take heart in the fact that that is not going to be. The last run scored in this one. Pujols is at nine. He's driven in 28. And the fourth career grand slam. You see that ball spinning out over the middle of the plate. Once again, Matt drops sidearm. The ball does nothing, but the Cub defense opened the door for four runs this inning. So Clement's now given up eight home runs in 44 innings this year. And all this damage with two outs three hits after Tomko tried to bunt and couldn't get it down and the Cardinals now lead it five two for Edmonds and he takes a shot to the right side runs a picks it up four outs given turns into five runs scored for St. Louis we head to the second inning bottom half five two Redbirds. WB's Big 
Sunday, the two-hour season finale of Charm. I'm here to help you save the future. A mysterious stranger helps the Charmed ones find their inner goddess. I say we castrate him. <gasps> a power so intoxicating. Who are you? The Supreme. It makes good girls go bad. Thank you, Bachelor number three. What the hell is this? Goddess has gone wild? The season finale of Charm. Tonight at 7 on WGN, Chicago's WB. Have you ever spent like five minutes with him? He's totally self-centered and insensitive. They just don't go together. I mean, she's my best friend. She has these emotional needs he can't meet. Remember what she went through with Brad? It's just like awful. He's so rude. And it's a deep drive to center. Rodriguez makes the catch. It looks like they're going to send the runner. Here comes the throw. He's safe. He's safe. The winning run is now on third. You're such a great listener. Thanks. My parents just bought the only minivan to get a five-star safety rating since I was born. So did mine. I can watch movies, and my dad says that they didn't even have to pay extra. Me too. Mom pushes a button, and the doors open like magic. And it beeps when she can't see my bike. Ours is that. My dad said that we have a choice of 0% or Ford would match our down payment up to 1,000 for a total of 5,000 down. Us too. Our new minivan is a Ford Windstar. So is ours. If you haven't looked at Ford lately, look again. Their parents did. This portion of Chicago Cubs baseball on WGN is brought to you by your local Ford store. If you haven't looked at Ford lately, look again. If a Cubs player hits a homer today, write down the distance and player's name and send it to WGN-TV. You could win two round-trip tickets to any Southwest Airlines destination. Matt Clement serves up a grand slam home run to Albert Pujols after the Cubs couldn't cover first base on a J.D. Drew slow roller. So four Cardinal outs given in the second inning. They played five runs, take the lead right back, 5-2 for Corey Patterson. And he unloads. That one hit high in the air, right center field. Will that be deep enough? It will be deep enough. Hit it high and watch it fly. Corey Patterson hits his eighth home run. There's going to be a few more before this is over because Tom Cope does not have a sinker. Corey's now driven in 28. He leads the team in runs batted in. He didn't get all of that one, but that's all he had to get with the wind blowing like it is. Watch it again. This one on the outer portion, but Corey with pretty good plate coverage takes it out of the ballpark. And how far did it fly? 375 happy feet. That brings up Mark Ronsalanik. All of a sudden, a four game hit streak for Mark. That ends a drought of three hits and 34 at bats and had him move from first to seventh in the batting order. Eli Marrero has taken over in right field. Well, Drew's had those knee problems. Maybe the rain coming down a little more forcefully here. And the footing is not particularly good. And the rain is really starting to pelt down. One ball, two strikes. I would like to send along best wishes and a happy first birthday to my youngest son, Larry Stone, the four legged son. I'm sure he's looking on in Scottsdale. And what did we send young Lawrence a very large bone being 120 pounds and all two balls two strikes and that's out of play. Grezelanek has always had a good run at it against Brett Tomko. Now it's full, three and two. Nobody out, one in. Five three game. Normally Grezelanek's a hard guy to strike out. You can get him out, but he usually makes contact. And there's an example. He fouled off a pretty good pitch. So this should be a good battle. From the Southwest Airlines Plainview camera, take a look at 
spoiling a pitch that's right on the corner and you live to see another one. And here it comes. High drive into right field. Real good at bat for Grunzelani. Eli Marrero again is checked in, makes the play in right. We'll try to get an update on the J.D. Drew situation. Tony LaRusso might just be saying, hey, we can't afford to lose him. Let's get him out with the wet track today. And let's watch what Grezelanek does. He spoiled a very good pitch, and then again, this one's right on the corner, but he's looking away. And he guides it into right field. That was a very good at bat. And that'll bring up Damian Miller. He's hitting 250 on the year. He's knocked in 14 men. And Tomko given a lead, pitching very carefully, and is getting hit very hard. Tomko one and four lifetime against the Cubs. Clement has never beaten the Cardinals. That's a recipe for a lot of runs. That and wind gusts up to 39 miles an hour blowing out toward right center. And two keys to remember. Number one, Cubs playing at home get the final at bat. Number two, the Cardinals bullpen. It's been somewhat shaky at times. Is a big problem. One ball, one strike, and that's high. Ball two. I had a chance, Chip, to chat with Walt Jockety, the general manager of the St. Louis Cardinals, said something pretty interesting. And we will get to it. Ground ball toward Roland at third. That ball ate him alive. Made a good throw. And Vina, how about that turn at second base? Grazolanic did everything. He could to break it up, but Vina hung in there. That guy is tough at second base, and it's around the horn double play, two outs. Well, we told you this defense is state of the art. The ball comes up, takes a bad hop, but rolling right in front of it. And Fernando Vina stays in there, doesn't make a good throw, but trusts that Tino Martinez can dig it out. He does just that. These guys are just wonderful in the infield. They're a pleasure to watch. They've only committed 15 errors as a team. I asked Walt Jockety if Isringhausen does not come back as soon as you think he can, do you have the finances to go get a closer? He said in one word, no. Clement pops that up right side. Watch the wind play with this. Vina and Martinez. That ball was headed toward the stands, and the wind pushed it into fair play. And the Cardinals second baseman makes the catch. The Cubs get one of the runs back. They now trail it. 5 3 at the end of two. I hope it doesn't rain. Hey, guys. Come on in. Better get here early for the best values in America. During Jeep Days, get 0% financing or great cash allowances on Jeep vehicles. Plus, get our 770 powertrain limited warranty. But hurry, Jeep Days end June 2nd. Good night. Corey Patterson has hit a home run to make it a 5-3 Cardinal lead. And now Scott Rowland digs in to start off our third inning here. He struck out to end the St. Louis first. And that one escapes Damian Miller. Let's quickly pause for station identification. This is America's number one sports station. WGN-TV, Chicago's WB. This is not a good matchup for Matt Clement. Roland has hit him pretty well, including a couple of home runs lifetime. One ball, one strike. That's off the plate inside. It's two and one. What's gotten into the Detroit Tigers? They've scored eight runs in their first three trips to the plate today. They're beating Tampa Bay eight to two after six. Lively baseball. And Dimitri Young. They traded Randall Simon, but they kept Dimitri Young, and he's a pretty good hitter. Driven down the right field line. If that stays fair, that's trouble. 
It does not however in the count now two and two. The rain starting to come down now in waves. You can see it buffeting over the field of play. The juniper bushes in center field rustling in the breeze. In fact our center field camera positions you don't ordinarily see the cameras sitting out there. Why. There's a dark green camera shed normally protecting our center field camera position. Well that blew over overnight. So the wind ferocious today and that nearly hit Roland full count three and two. Be careful if you throw this one away from Roland because he's got terrific power to right center. What an addition to the team Scott Roland is. Did he go. Yes he did. Roland strikes out for the second time today. One up one down. He's not really happy with that call. And Edding says are you talking to me. That was a good slider low and away. It was out of the strike zone. And Roland for the second time on the identical pitch as a strikeout victim and just went a little too far. Watch it from the side. He thought he checked it. Eddings had the deciding vote. That'll bring up Tino Martinez hitless in his last 12 at bats for the Cardinals. And he swings through that special tip of the cap to our center field cameraman today Greg Silas he's got the tough task of keeping that center field camera shot as steady as he can so Greg we appreciate it hang in there buddy only four more hours to go five three <laughs> is our score that's not real good duty today of course there will be a little something extra in your pay envelope I guarantee you for a seat and D that and an Ashworth windbreaker I'm sure will be forthcoming. <laughs> For Greg Silas today. But a great job by Greg and the rest of our fine cameramen today. We really appreciate the great pictures you give us today and every day here in Chicago. 1 1 pitch to Tino. That is scorched toward left field. Will there be a play on that? Not a, another home run. Tino Martinez hits his third. He's finally in double digits in RBIs. Four home runs already hit today. Since 1974 the highest total is 11 by the Phillies and Reds. They did it in 79 and 77. We might see something close to that today. Well if this one goes long enough and if Matt keeps dropping that arm slot we'll see a few more. As you can see this one stays up. Dino Martinez hits it out. And so far the Cardinals lead by three. But there'll be plenty of runs scored today. Here's Renteria. He has doubled and scored. This is a war of attrition, as it were. You just hope that you can stop them long enough to let your offense catch up and put you back in front. It's just a real difficult day to pitch. And if you're unlucky enough to draw the short straw in this case, you just have to go out there and hope that your guys outscore the other guys because neither pitcher is going to hold down the opposing offense one ball one strike to Edgar Renteria that one chopped to third there's ground ball Matt needed and there's out number two when he Bob, back in the old days Stoney when you lived in one of the luxurious Gold Coast <laughs> condominiums he used to wake up and on your day to pitch and you tell you could tell almost automatically what kind of day it was going to be well I lived in that one that's from our vantage point straight over the center field scoreboard and I looked into the ballpark and when that flag was pointing at me I did not want to come here because I threw all fly <laughs> balls. Here's Matheny. And Chippy I gave up five the big red machine in two and a third innings. And I and it was the littler apartment right there you're looking at on the left this is the one that I lived in. I lived in a convertible 200 square foot studio making those big bucks in those days two balls no strikes ah but you've moved up now you're up to 250 square feet <laughs> that's right with a half a bathroom that's, that's all you need and no kitchen and a tough day for the umbrellas oh, man. this is a very difficult day these are hardy folks at the ballpark today there's Laurel there's Hardy two balls no strikes Tomko the pitcher waits on deck.
Three balls and a strike. Matheny's got a couple of home runs and he's going to get a very good hitter's pitch here. The more 2 0 oh, 3 1 pitches you see, the tougher it'll be to hold down the Cardinals. Tipped away, full count to the Cardinal catcher, Mike Matheny. I'm not thinking that felt real good for Damian Miller. That's the reason why Doug Eddings went out and took a couple of steps and threw it to Matt Clement. That ball fouled right off his anatomy. Well, we know for sure, Steve, we're going to play baseball tomorrow, Tuesday, Wednesday, and Thursday. We'll be inside Miller Park, where we hope there'll be no rainouts. Matheny goes down, even with the roof on from time to time. That can be problematic up north. Another home run for the Cardinals. They build their lead back up to three. It's six to three. Cubs baseball on WGN is brought to you by Chevy. The cars you depend on, the cars that last, will be there. The 4,000 CarQuest auto parts stores across North America. You'll find it at CarQuest. And by Honda. See your Honda dealer to learn more about the great value Honda has to offer. Cubs baseball on WGN is brought to you by Bud Light. For the great taste, it won't fill you up and never let you down. Make it a Bud Light. There's a look at the crew chief Bruce Fremming. We talked to Bruce before the ball game yesterday. He said he's on the Atkins diet and over the winter he lost 40 pounds. And from that angle he found them again. That's just wrong. Give well, the you, man some credit. You know Bruce and I go back a long way. In fact he umped a lot of my games. I'm still bitter about some I've of those calls. I that. That was a Vicious <laughs> shot on a rainy day. Bellhorn grounds out. Uh, one up, one down here in our third inning. How are your beloved lug nuts doing, my friend? Well, they did pretty well yesterday, and Jay Cuck Roy did an exceptional job. As you know, Chip, he's got very good control, and he showed it yesterday. Buck Coates went four for four as Lansing defeated Burlington nine to four. They're in first place by a half a game and Bobby Hill did a pretty good job as did Chad Blasco who's in our minor league report quite a bit. Line drive right center field by Alex. That's uh, going to skip past Edmonds. Marrero backs up. Alex on his way to second where no one covers the bag. A one out double for Gonzalez. Eleven two base hits for him. And the Cubs coming right back trailing by three. As you can see, the footing is really tough in the outfield. Edmonds is a good outfielder. He realized he couldn't stop. And fortunately, Marrero backing him up made sure that Gonzalez stays at second. Cubs have got to put some runs up because the footing is getting awful. This might be one of those five and fly specials if it keeps getting damp on that mound. They've put the diamond dry surface on the infield, the mound, and at home plate in between every half inning so far today. And it's not getting any better. There's another rocket. Center field deep. Edmonds will go as far as he can go. And we got a one run game. Troy O'Leary knows that he's got to pick up the slack for Sammy Sosa. That's the third Cub home run. And O'Leary, for the first time this year, takes one out of the ballpark. He's driven in six. He's now scored two runs. And in the middle of this lineup, he becomes very important. Without a sinker, you are really in trouble today as Troy O'Leary gets it up in the wind. Mother Nature does the rest and for Southwest Airlines how far does it fly 401 happy feet. So it's a one run game Alu grounds to Renteria and that'll take care of him for out number two. Buckle your seatbelts if the weather allows it we're going to have nine real interesting innings of baseball today. Well Larry hit number three for the Red Sox when he had some of his better years. And he's hitting three here in front of Alou and Choi. 
And speaking of Choi, here he is. He grounded out his first time up, one for nine in the series is Choi. And Tomko gets the corner. I think that means hit a home run he saw. And happy Mother's Day in the bottom. I'm quadrilingual, you know. Two balls and a strike. And there you go. That is a Mother's Day sign in Spanish. Matheny takes some punishment. Two balls, two strikes. It's a tough job behind the plate. They ask you to think along with every hitter. They ask you to block pitches in the dirt, take foul balls off your anatomy, and still contribute offensively. Choi cuts through that. Wild game in Wrigley Field. We've seen five home runs hit in three innings. Cardinals lead it six to five now. Troy O'Leary's two run homer cuts the Cardinal lead to one now as we go to the fourth inning. Tomko, Vina, and Marrero are coming up for St. Louis. Remember, J.D. Drew left the game after an inning of play. Still have not heard why. But Clement will be happy to get a left handed bat out of that Cardinal attack. They've heard him today. Tomko skips away. Clement just cannot command the strike zone again today. Two balls and a strike. He's lost his last three games, during which the Cubs have scored just four runs for him. Today, you throw out some of this with the weather conditions. Any fly ball has a great chance of leaving the ballpark. But there is one troubling sign, and that is for sinker baller. He leads the team in home runs given up with nine, and he leads by a wide margin. All three high to the pitcher. You're asking for trouble. Well, Tomko's a pretty good hitter, and you got to believe he's going to get a fastball here. Let's just hope it's not hittable. Chop to the left side. The horn to his left. He's got the pitcher running. High throw, but he's got a tall man over there. One up and one down. We've seen five home runs hit today at Wrigley Field, Steve. That's after three innings of play. With the winds blowing out, sometimes the fireworks follow. As you can see, 11 with the Reds and the Phillies. It's very possible that we could be knocking at the door of that one, especially if the wind stays the same. Top of the order now, Fernando Vina. He's pulled the ball twice. He's two for two. Now Miller sets up outside, and Clement hits the spot. Strike one. Other baseball. Arizona's in Pittsburgh. Diamondbacks lead it two to one. Pittsburgh's gotten Brian Giles back, and he hit a couple of home runs yesterday. We'll see them on the upcoming road trip. Pittsburgh with a rare home win. Now five and twelve at PNC Park. Still the worst record at home in the National League. Well, one of the reasons why the record is what it is, Chip, is that that park is tailored for left-hand power, and with Giles out most of the time. They have less power from the left side than most of the teams that come in. One ball, one strike. Vina, another hit. Let's see if Corey can cut it off. A little bit of a rooster tail in center field. Good job. He tried to cut it off. Vina will try for two, and he will make it. He thought about a double right out of the box. He's three for three. Well, one of the reasons why he was thinking two bases is that he knows by the time this ball gets to Corey Patterson, two things are going to happen. One, he's going to have a hard time planting his foot, and two, the ball's going to be wet, and it's going to be very difficult to throw. You see how many extra steps he took. He did a nice job of getting it back in, but on the relay, Vina with the dive to the third base side, and for you youngsters, he hooks the bag, and he makes sure he keeps his hands on the bag. A heads up play is Alex kept the tag on him but Vina did a nice job of making sure he didn't come off the bag. Here's Eli Marrero his first at bat of the day Vina three for three. High and tight 
for Marrero. Very valuable player for the Cardinals. He can catch, he can play both corner outfield spots, he can play some first base. And he does have a little power. A couple home runs and 15 driven in this year. Eli came up and was a full time catcher. And then, as we know, he had a battle with cancer. He won that battle. And now he's back as a guy who can play just about everywhere. He's a native of Havana, Cuba. Now makes his home in Miami, Florida. Last year he had 18 home runs. Pretty valuable man. Ball three to him. Houston taking out some frustration on the Phillies today. Nine to three, they lead Philadelphia. That game at the bottom of the fifth inning. And now Larry Rothschild out to talk to Matt Clement, who has been all over the place today. And uh, as this meeting continues, we get word Jim Tomey's just hit another home run for the Phillies. So it's now a 9 7 game. Veteran Stadium playing downhill for the Astros and Phillies today. Well, I could really use a drop in. Are you ready for one? Indeed. Well, here comes one of the best ones of the year, Steve. The Cubs will be back home. May 26th until June the 8th. A long, long one, two, three, four series homestand. And there are good seats available for virtually all of them. Yankee tickets might be a little tough. You can't get the other tickets, though, for the Pirates, Astros, and the Devil Rays by calling 800 the Cubs, coming to the Wrigley Field box office, or visiting any Chicago Land Sears or Sears hardware, or online at Cubs.com for the broadest selection of Cubs merchandise. Cubs.com, the official site. Wearing your heart on your sleeve, cap pullover, and a whole lot more. Two men are on with one out. Well, this is not a particularly good situation because, barring the fact that Pujols will hit a ground ball and turn it into two, you have to get by Pujols and Edmonds. And 74 pitches already. Look, the footing is not good. You can't feel the baseball as well as you would like, but. You have to deal with the elements here in Wrigley Field and the wind much more of a factor here than maybe any other park in the league. Well the man up hit a grand slam last time up. Albert Pujols. Two men on one away for him. Cubs would dearly love a ground ball and they'll get it. Bellhorn backhand stab fumbles for a moment second one and Grunzelina couldn't come up with a throw. If that's a good throw you're going to get too easily because Pujols can't run. So once again you're giving the Cardinals one more out than you have to give them and it won't show up in the scorebook because you can't anticipate a double play. Now he's got some time here because it's Pujols going down the line but that throw forces Grozelanek to have to move out of the way of the sliding Marrero. And as you can see he cannot get his footwork. If that ball is chest high, you have a chance to turn two. As it is now, you have to get by Edmonds, who's been handled well in the series, but he's awfully dangerous. Cardinals have had 21 batters at the plate. 13 men have reached here in the first three innings and two thirds. Here's Edmonds. First and third with two down. The chip giving him the extra out in the second inning cost four runs. Hopefully giving him the extra out this inning will not produce a similar fate. Skies starting to brighten up just a bit here at the ballpark. That's certainly good news. Edmonds ahead in the count of ball. No strikes and a high fly ball to left. Watch the wind play with this. A little under it. He's got to try to recover and can't make the play. One run scores. Pujols around third. He will come in to score. And the Cardinals lead eight to five. That was trouble from the get go. And a double for Jim Edmonds. Give him two more runs batted in. And the way the wind is blowing, you have to have a pretty good idea that this one is going to blow toward left center field. Moises overran it to start. Now, that wind, we told you, is gusting up to 39 miles an hour. Should be an easy out. It's not. Five outs this inning. So far, it's produced two runs. And that does go as a double and two driven in. But you can charge this one to the elements. Again, another thing to think about when these teams play all summer long. 
The difference in defense. Not so much in errors in total, but plays that are or are not made. Cubs have been guilty of that today. Five outs in this inning. Two more St. Louis runs. They lead it eight to five. Vina with three hits already. We've only played four innings and he scored two runs. He makes him go. Here's Roland. He struck out twice swinging. And that hits him on the way by. So Roland gets first base. Tino Martinez, the batter now. Dusty Baker thinking about who he might get up in that bullpen. That one touches the uniform. Now remember the Cod, the Cubs brought up Todd Wellmeyer, so they've got 12 pitchers. They can go fairly deep in the pen and still not run out of pitchers, but 20 straight games without an off day lie ahead for the Cubs. May 29th will be the second and final day off this month for the Cubs. Here's Martinez. There's a drive. High in the air right center field O'Leary back at the warning track and that's going to leave. Jimmy he didn't hit that ball at all but as you can see you give a quality team four five outs it cost them four runs in the second it's cost them five runs here. There's nothing you can do about the win. there is something you can do about the defense and you're right when you said the Cardinals make very few if any mistakes defensively. And that's why if you never beat yourself more times than not it's tough for the opposition to beat you. Tino hits his second home run. And it's going to be a banner offensive day for both teams. Six home runs on the day combined. Yes friends we're in the fourth inning. Eleven five. Make a little contact. And good things are going to happen today. And the plays that should have made that been made that weren't. He had Pujols up, a uh, sharply hit ball to Bellhorn. He made a good stop. The throw a little off target. Rodzelana couldn't turn what would have been an inning ending double play. Three more men have come to the plate. All three of them have scored. And what was a one run deficit is now a six run deficit. And the Cub bullpen is going to go to work. So Tino Martinez with a couple of home runs, four batted in. And there are some Steve who might start to question what is up with Matt Clement. He's in line to drop his fourth consecutive game the home run total again to a certain degree you have to credit the weather for some of these shots. But this is not the same pitcher we saw last year for the Cubs and they need him. It's the arm slot more than anything else Chip. He's throwing a flat slider many times. And that is because he's dropping the arm slot the ball comes up spinning. And for Matt to be effective, he has to get downward rotation on both his sinker and his slider. If he doesn't, gives up too many fly balls. And today, they all go out of the ballpark. It's as simple as that. Two balls, two strikes. That out of play. Perhaps Choi will give chase. And he cannot come up with it. It's two rows up in the seats. It is still very early. This is, again, Matt's eighth start. But... You do have Cruz. You do have Wellmeyer down in the bullpen. Those are men who can start. Do you even consider at this point in time making changes to your rotation? Not yet. It's still too early. And Matt had a very good year last year. You have to give him the benefit of the doubt. Maybe he'll grow back that goatee. 2-2. Two -two. All three inside. It's a full count to Edgar Renteria. He's hitting for the third time here in our fourth inning. That's a base hit to left field. Five straight Cardinals have reached after the Cubs couldn't turn a double play. And Matheny, the ninth man to hit in the inning. With Sammy Sosa in the lineup with the Cardinals, and with the strength of this Cub team bullpen, you wouldn't mind maybe getting into a slugfest with St. Louis. The problem is the Cubs don't have Sammy Sosa right now. They have struggled to score runs even with him in the lineup. And you're down six runs to St. Louis today. Well, Dusty knows something, Chip. And that is that he's got Mark Pryor going tomorrow. And most likely, he'll go deep into the game. So he doesn't mind 
using a whole lot of that bullpen today if he thinks he can get a win out of this one. And it is too early to concede anything. It's too lively a day. Might be one of those 23 22 games. But if Matt Clement doesn't batten down the hatches, it's going to be a quick day for him. Well, he's due up fourth in the fourth inning for the Cubs. And that one eludes Damian Miller. Renteria into second base on wild pitch number seven. This is a real wild one. No chance at all for Damian Miller as this slider sweeps well away. A ball and a strike to Matheny. Well, that's where you know that Matt just doesn't have his release point because he's thrown the ball up and into right handers consistently. When he's right that ball is knee high and it moves about six inches inside and they can't handle it at all. Matheny hit the back of the helmet. Inside 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 Clement just can't find the release point you're right Matheny apparently is all right. Barry Weinberg on his way to talk it over and I think Dusty Baker is going to come out and might give Clement the hook here. Well he's got to because Larry Rothschild's already been out once so it's going to be Juan Cruz. Matt Clement has got no idea where the ball is going today. Matheny fortunately has it hit off the back before it hits the helmet. Not a very happy man. And there's been a few Cardinals hit in this series. I don't think any of them intentionally. Clement just had absolutely no control today. Well, he's given up 11 runs. He'll leave with two men on here. Two outs in the fourth inning. Cubs have given the Redbirds a lot of extra outs, and the Redbirds have hit a lot of home runs today. Back with more in a minute. Here in a big St. Louis fourth inning, they've played it five runs. And Tomko hits for the second time in the inning. It's already his third at bat. We're only in the fourth. Twelfth appearance for Cruz, one and one, ERA 661. He's worked entirely out of the bullpen, but he's the insurance policy in case you have to go to another starter for any reason. And Juan delivers a quick strike. The other thing you hope for is with the wind blowing as hard as it has been, you hope that it doesn't die down. Because the Cubs need all the help they can get trailing by six today. I don't think it's dying down anytime soon so get as many at bats as you can. That's a pretty good wild pitch. Let's see if that can be cut off by Miller otherwise that's in the dugout and you've got even bigger problems. Third wild pitch of the game for the Cubs staff and that's the second wild pitch of the year for Cruz. Now Damian Miller going to talk it over with him. It's another flat slider and it flattens out under the glove of Miller really when you throw as hard as Cruz does even on the breaking ball you've really got very little of any chance if you're the man behind the plate. So you would just as soon end it here you don't want to get to Vina who's three for three. Tomko hits it sharply but Alex up the middle. Makes a very good play. Cardinals get five outs and they score five runs. They take a big lead to the bottom of our fourth inning here in Chicago. Well, a very memorable Mother's Day for that youngster enjoying Wrigley Field for the very first time today. And this will be our last visit at home for quite some time. Cubs are back at Wrigley May 26th. And on May 28th, Wednesday, you'll receive a Topps 1971 Glenn Beckert baseball card courtesy of Fisher Nuts. These authentic reprints are available exclusively at Wrigley Field. Catch all the action as the Cubs take on the Pirates, a 120 game time start. There are good tickets available, and you can get them online at Cubs.com. Well, hopefully, there won't be any high and tight pitches this inning. Patterson hit a home run on the first pitch he saw in the second inning and Tom knowing that starts him with a breaking ball here in the fourth inning. He's been staked to an 11 5 lead. And a rope.
deep into right field for Patterson. He's two for two. Yesterday, Chip, we both concurred that Corey is really starting to figure it out. He waited back on that breaking ball, something he wasn't doing earlier in the year, and he hit a rope to right field. There's the curveball. And you see Corey doesn't get out on the front foot. The key to hitting an off speed pitch is keeping your hands back. Even if your weight shifts, if you keep your hands back, you're going to make good contact. And he really looks good. Here's Grudzelanek, Mark with seven hits in his last four games. Sometimes a change in the batting order does a guy a world of good. Takes a little pressure off Mark to get on base, lets him bat lower in the order to work on his stroke, and he's responded. With some good performances. Patterson taking to that number six spot very nicely. And another factor, Grezelonik's always given Tom Coe a tough run. So base hit here and things could get a little interesting. This might be the most insecure six run lead Tom Coe's ever had in the major leagues with the conditions <laughs> what they are today. Two balls and a strike to mark. Well, that was a, a swing that Grezelanek would like to have back. That one was well out of the zone, even ahead 2 and 0. Oh. No way you can handle that pitch. First final is in from the American League. Detroit beats Tampa Bay 9 to 2 is the score. Alan Trammell's got the Tigers playing better now. Grezelanek has an extra base hit into the left field corner. Patterson around second on his way to third. The grass just kills that ball Cubs have him second and third nobody out when you can hit a guy it doesn't matter what he throws you just find some way to find a hole the first time a looper to right field that time a ringing double down the line and you see again Mark is out on the front foot but keeps his hands back long enough to drive it down the line they didn't play him to pull but with the soft breaking ball he hit it between Roland and the bag and now they're going to make a trip to the mound to try to settle down Tomko. Dave Duncan knows that even with what looks like a huge lead in this one, the conditions dictate that no lead will be safe. It's almost like playing in Coors Field because of the wind. And surprisingly, they will. Is that Steve Klein getting up? I think it is. This and was they, a guy that they thought might be their closer. Well, they've used him in all different type of situations. But you have O'Leary, you have Choi, you have Patterson. And you have the switch hitting Bellhorn at the top of the order. And Tony LaRussa has a good feeling that this is a game he can't let get away. Okay. I know it's early in the season, but he wants to establish the fact that the Cardinals can hold the lead. Miller hit into a double play last time up. And the importance of winning series in Chicago for the Cardinals is. Very simply, the Cubs have played very bad baseball at Bush Stadium in St. Louis. They've lost 28 of the last 34 played on the Cardinals home field. The Cubs have had the best of it here at home. Oh and two to Miller. Last year, a very tough year in this rivalry. The Cubs won six, lost 12. But the Cardinals have squandered a lot of leads. A lot of it has to do with no Jason Isringhausen. And he's not coming back anytime soon. They're going to have him throwing off flat ground, but they know that it's going to be a while yet. So the guys in that pen have got to hitch up their belts and get it done. That missed one ball, two strikes. Matheny wanted the pitch, didn't get it. Cardinals with 10 blown saves. Surprisingly, Kansas City still in first place despite blowing 10 saves this year. But the Royals lead in the AL Central tenuous, just two and a half games over Minnesota. Chip, this is a big at bat for Miller. Again, it is early in the game. There's two men on, but you've got Cruz due up next and Bellhorn, who hasn't hit. Damian has to find a way to get at least one run home. The infield is back. They're going to concede the run. So shorten up your swing and make some contact. Right center field's his happy zone. The 2 2 pitch, slow breaking ball, fly ball center field. Edmonds plays very shallowly. There's the catch. Patterson will come halfway. And Miller cannot drive his man home. So Cruz will bat here with runners at second and third and one man out. Edmonds, one of the best and most accurate throwing center fielders. He also knew that he had to hit the cutoff man and he threw it right at Martinez. So Cruz this year making his first at bat. And you think about the bunt situation. 
Be a real good play. You've got the sloppy wet track on the infield here. Cruz puts a charge into that. A fly ball to right. Who wants it? It'll be Edmonds sliding in front or behind Edmonds. Marrero slides and he might be shaken up. I think Marrero's hurt. Marrero hurt himself sliding behind Edmonds. It's a sack fly and an RBI for Cruz. I think he turned his ankle, Chip, and I think the reason why he got out of the way was Edmonds being the left-hander with the more accurate arm he thought had the better throw, and that's the conditions. That's probably why they took Drew out of the game, and now Marrero is hurt. It's a war of attrition between these two clubs, and Barry Weinberg out to have a look at him. Well, you can almost bet you're going to see Orlando Palmero head out there now. Okay, let's see what happened to Marrero. Oh, yeah. The right ankle just got stuck. He caught a rut, and the body just rolled over the right ankle. Second player in as many games to go out with that kind of injury. Last night, the Giants lost Ray Durham down in Atlanta, sliding into third base on a nasty injury, and Durham's going to be out of the Giant lineup for a while. Well, that's a huge loss because he was leading off. The Giants having a terrific year. They lead by seven games over Los Angeles. But one of the reasons they were playing very well is the fact that Durham was getting on base hitting about 310. And the Giants who have won seven of their last 10 trying to make a shambles out of that race in the West with Durham out it could bring Los Angeles back into play. I think Colorado is going to settle down somewhat and it looks like the Dodgers with a struggling Arizona might have the best shot at the Giants and folks that was a nasty looking play. I mean, and, and no matter what heat the rivalry has, you don't want to see anybody get hurt. This is such a great series. And Marrero, a young man that's overcome so much, they're going to have to bring out the stretcher to get him out of right field. And what looked like a real nasty injury is probably going to be a very severe one for the Cardinal right field. Well, Chip, it sounds strange, but with his foot folding under him, you almost hope for a break as opposed to a bad ligament damage injury. You see it right there. The foot folds under him. It's the right ankle. And that is a terrible injury. Let's hope that he's going to be okay. He's a real valuable member of this team because of his flexibility. And they're going to carry him off the field. Barry Weinberg you see cradling Marrero's right ankle and uh, Dr. Stephen Adams and company of the Cubs medical staff will come out and help Marrero they'll escort him not quite sure if they have an x-ray facility here at Wrigley Field I know oftentimes they take him to Northwestern Memorial Hospital but uh, I think he'll probably wind up there because I think they want to make sure absolutely. exactly what's wrong with them and make sure that they get the best treatment available. And I'm sure they'll do it at Northwestern, Chip. Unfortunately, I've been there far too many times, but they're an excellent medical crew. And uh, if Eli's family's watching this game, rest assured he's in good hands with Dr. Stephen Adams and uh, the rest of the Cubs medical staff. They'll take great care of him, and we only hope that the injury is not as serious as it looked on those replays that we showed you. It's a Cub. Deficit now of five at 11 six as a uh, Cruz is given credit for a sacrifice fly. There are however two outs and uh, this crowd very very quiet as we wait for Marrero to be taken off and there's away. something else in mind. Tony La Russa made a change. Right. Jay G, G Drew started this game in right field. So he's out. Marrero is going to be carried out. They're going to be on their third right fielder in this the fourth inning and I. I it's got to be Palmero, I believe. I would think, but looking out there, it's a very big man out there in right field. Looks like Eduardo Perez perhaps is starting to loosen up. He's just to the right of uh, that scrum of people, and indeed it is Eduardo yes. Perez. He'll be called upon to play right field. And they do have also Miguel Cairo, who's played uh, three times in right field this year. So they've got some guys with the ability to do that job, and that's something you hate to see. Marrero in a whole lot of pain. We can only wish him well and hopefully he'll be back. So uh, even Dave Duncan one of the finest pitching coaches in the game is helping cart Palmero to the Cardinal locker room 
And uh, they'll get him hustled off to the hospital. And of course, as soon as we get any information from the Redbird staff, we'll pass along that to you at home. But you can see Barry Weinberg keeping that ankle as still as he possibly can. And Eduardo Perez now will come into the game to play right field in our fourth inning. So Tom Cole get a few extra tosses here just to get loose again after a delay of 10 minutes or so here. This is real tough on a pitcher also in conditions like this. The field got a little wetter. The footing on the mound got a little worse. And you don't get any looser standing out on the mound. So let's see if the Cubs can take advantage of the fact that they still have a runner in scoring position as they move to the top with Mark Bellhorn. So Juan Cruz drives in his first run of the year. And isn't it something Steve a couple of years ago the Cubs lost their third baseman Bill Miller on Mother's Day in St. Louis on that slide in foul territory he got that knee jammed up under one of the rotating signs and the Cubs never really recovered from that very very nasty injury. And it also took a long time for Bill Miller to get back 100 percent. So Marrero out of the game. Perez is in right and Bellhorn a fly ball shallow right center field that one might drop it is going to drop Edmonds cannot make a play on it. Mark Bellhorn drives on Mark Rudzelanek. It's an 11 7 game. They had to play so deep because of the wind and he found a vacant triangle out there in right center field. Give Mark his 19th RBI. And I think today it's a whole lot easier to come in than it is to go back on a ball so they will be playing deeper than normal. No chance at all for that one. And as a leadoff hitter now, Mark Bellhorn with his first hit in the leadoff spot where he did so well last year. Yeah, he had 14 home runs out of that spot last year. And, and more forget about the batting average, he was on base nearly 40% of the time. I was going to say, more importantly, a 389 on base percentage. So perhaps it'll be out of the number one spot that Mark Bellhorn regains the magic of one year ago. So Alex Gonzalez the hitter he doubled and scored last time up it's an 11 7 game but on a day like today a four run deficit might be more akin to one because everybody is in scoring position when they come to the plate. Steve Klein continues to throw in the bullpen and the rain continues to pelt down. A costly day for the Cardinals Marrero injured and Alex stays alive Matheny couldn't hang on to that foul tip rocket. Two in, two outs, three cut hits in the fourth inning. Get the feeling that whoever stops the other team from scoring first is going to win this game. So far, there's only been one half inning where no one has scored. Ironically, it was the Cardinals who failed to score in the first. Well, one of the things that Tony LaRusso knows, Chip, and I think that's why Klein is up so early, he knows that the Cubs have had their problems with left handers this year. Otherwise you very rarely go to Klein this early in the game. He also suspects that maybe this one won't go the full nine. One ball two strikes driven down the right field line sharply but that's out of play. so lightly coming down it's strengthened in waves as the day has gone on and there's another ball deep left field Alex hits a rocket wow out of New England two run game third home run given up by Tomko you can't beat fun at the old ball yet. And that's also the second home run in less than 24 hours the fifth of the year he's driven in 15 and just like that St. Louis gets five in the fourth the Cubs have answered with four it's a two run game and the fireworks continue. It's almost like as if you and Al Roboski were facing each other out there today. We did one time did in Modesto really? indeed. It was a titanic struggle. You know memories fade as you get older. <laughs> But I fanned 15, he fanned 13, and I won. Now he might have forgotten that, but he was a starting pitcher in those days before he got smart and moved to the bullpen. No doubt about it. 
So Alex Gonzalez after that scintillating and awe inspiring interview with you Steve comes <laughs> up and hits another home run makes it a two run game and Steve Klein is on for the Cardinals here in the fourth. Is today's fourth inning hero Alex Gonzalez with the fourth Cub home run in as many innings it's now a two run deficit Steve Klein comes out of the Cardinal pen on for the 15th time popped up back toward us you can't give up on anything today chip because that wind is howling out and that one looked like it was going to be in the upper deck and blew back toward the field of play so defensively you have to charge everything toward the seats and more times than not that one will come back into play so Klein who's one and three with a 527 ERA comes in with just 13 and two thirds innings of work and a rough day for today's starters combined Clement and Tomko have gone seven innings and a third they've given up 20 runs all of them earned and seven home runs. Welcome to a windy day at Wrigley where the rain really starting to come down now. He might have a delay here shortly. One ball, two strikes. Got to play five complete for it to be an official game. Alex has always said that he has trouble in April, but he's hit 27 May home runs during the course of his career. One ball, two strikes to O'Leary. And that one hit high in the air. Watch the wind play tricks with that. Renteria overruns it, and that'll drop. This is great. <laughs> I mean, it's, it's, it's just amazing. <laughs> it's just absolutely great. You have everybody converging on the ball. And you have to realize the ball is going to blow toward left center field. Pujols comes in. He had no chance. Roland goes out. Renteria goes out. And that ball falls right in between all of them. Watch it again. Everybody drifting with this. Renteria calls for it and then realizes he can't get his footing. And they all overrun the ball. You know what this is like? This is like, with no offense to Tiger Woods, who's just a marvelous, but it's like watching Tiger Woods going out and shooting 90. It, you, you just, you can relate to what they're going through out there. And so the bloops in left are even, the home runs are nearly even, and if Alu hits a home run, the game will be even. The client has given up two home runs and 13 and two thirds innings of work. And Moises hit a two run home run the first, and he is starting to heat it up. And now Klein wants a new baseball. Field looks like it's holding all right, holding up all right, Stoney. The infield's not at all a quagmire, but the true test will be on the mound. Yes, but Chip, they've always said there's great drainage here. There's no doubt about it. Two outs, comes down two, and Alou a big cut and a miss. It's like the Keystone Cops in the field today. And that's understandable. The footing is just treacherous. And every time the ball pops up in the air, it's like the old candlestick park. Out of play by Alou. Nothing in two. Which played miraculously like three com park. But you know, they lost their sponsorship. I do. No balls, two strikes. Reds beat Milwaukee today, 7-5. Dodgers over Montreal, 4-3. It's 11-9 in the fourth here. Unbelievable. <laughs> and, and a long way to oh, go in yeah. this one. We told you at the top of the show, buckle up the seatbelts, folks. It might be one of those Cub Philly type games. We have seen seven home runs today. 11 is the single game record in this park. That's happened twice. One and two to Alu. He didn't offer it that. It's even a two and two with Big Choi waiting on deck. I would think that a couple of weeks ago, Moises would have gotten himself out on that one. But now he's seen the ball a little better, the balance is better, and he was able to hold up his swing. Gonna be the sinker here, I believe. Two two. It did sink, but he didn't swing. It's three and two. O'Leary will be running. And all you need to know about this game, look at the scoreboard. The well, Cardinals 0515 for the Cubs, 2-1-2-4. And he held his swing. I'm surprised that Martinez is holding him close. 
You would think he'd want to back up and get a better angle. The footing isn't good, so if he gets a half a step, not going to make that much difference. Full count, three balls, two strikes. He doesn't go, doesn't matter. It's ball four. And we will pause for station identification. It's five minutes past three in the central. We're in Chicago. It's an 11 9 Cardinal lead. This is America's number one sports station, WGN TV, Chicago's WB. I want to see a fly ball. I'd like to see it into right center field because it's going to blow out of the park. Crowd chanting, he stops name. Two on with two out. Strike one. Are these what you used to call so lovingly, Steve, the capricious winds of Wrigley Field? That's exactly what this is. They've made a new sign. I think that's what that says in <laughs> whatever language they're holding up. No balls and a strike to Choi. They've had his number in this series, Steve. Well, Chip, there's going to be some guys that take advantage of him in this his learning year. But just like Corey Patterson, he's going to figure it out. He's fanned five times, and you've got to figure they're going to stay away with the breaking ball here. No balls, two strikes to Choi. Cubs bat around in the inning. And that's a generous outside corner. They're trying to get this thing official. And Klein takes care of Hesop in the fourth inning. Four runs come across to make it a two run game. 11 9, St. Louis. And it's not official yet. Official game, it's 11 9 at the end of four. And the decision rests in the hands of that man, Bruce Freming, our crew chief. He and the rest of the umpires huddled on the infield a few moments ago. Good thing for the Cubs is they will have the final at bat should this thing be washed out at the end of five. Well I think if the conditions stay just like this what they will try to do is get in five innings and then try to wait out this particular storm and that's why they're talking it over now. He wants to know what the radar shows. It looks like we're at the tip of the storm and that most of it is by us. Chip I know that you've got the computer you can see the clouds and Exactly where the storm is. What does it look like on? Uh, I see a lot of screen? green. A lot of green, Steve. I'm not exactly sure what well, that We're not means. talking about your salary now. Oh. We're talking about the rain. Oh, no, that's not my salary. That's yours. <laughs> Mania pops it out of play. You are the expert analyst, you remember. <laughs> but looking at uh, the weather.com radar, we want to thank our friends at the Weather Channel for providing that to us. Uh, lots of rain. Most of it looks like it's north of town, but it is swirling over the city and. Roger Baird the groundskeeper was talking with Bruce Freming a second ago. He probably said as Bill Murray repeated in Caddyshack he doesn't think the heavy stuff is going to quite <laughs> right. come down for quite some time now. I so he might as well play on. Good fastball away by Cruz and he threw it by the red hot Fernando Vina. Laced into the seats. We'll do it again. No balls two strikes. Raining in Atlanta where the Braves trailed the Giants 3 2. Giants again lost Ray Durham. He's out at least 15 days, a high ankle sprain. And he was a very big spark plug for their magnificent start. It is really starting to come down. It's nasty. It really is nasty. And, and for, for, for those of you and who. Bruce are, Framing said enough's enough, I think. He's coming yeah, in. Yeah, that's it. He's yeah, going to he, call it. And I think this is a wise I mean, call decision. it for a while. He's yeah. not going to call the game. Yeah, but he's going to bring the rounds crew out here. Juan Cruz can't believe it. It's raining sideways here and swirling all over the ballpark. And we've already seen one man go down in these conditions. That's Marrero in right field. And that's not to say that's anybody's fault, but. These are absolutely horrid conditions under which to play and so we're going to have a delay here at Wrigley Field top of the fifth inning with the Cardinals enjoying a two run lead. The good news is despite trailing it's not an official game. And we would also like to say that those of you out there in the areas that have been ravaged by.